9. The Getaway A couple of weeks later, Everest sent me a message that she could no longer be a part of my life, that she needed space for herself and to respect herself. Though she didn't tell me why, and Radius hadn't mentioned or spoken of her since the evening of my birthday. I had just lost my best friend on the island, and the grieving process was very hard for me, especially considering I had no idea what I had done wrong. I had often learned to blame myself for anything bad that happened in my life, and this was a prime example. When Everest messaged me, I believed it was the falling out of our friendship because I had confronted her about something that must have been true. I did not know what happened on my birthday, so I only assumed she cut ties because something disrespectful had gone down. A year and a half later, I found out it was because she respected our friendship and did not want to get in the middle of something she did not ask to be a part of. Now, I still had Frost, but she had actually been going through a breakup the whole summer because of the events of the July ceremony, so we weren't around each other as much as we were used to. I did have Sayer, which felt good to have one friend I could talk to about anything, and I did. In the following weeks, Sayer and I would text day and night about anything and everything. I was letting the few things in my life that lit me up devour all my time because I needed to smile and feel gratitude. Radius had said we should get away and have our own personal ceremony because we were struggling sexually, and he knew that a few other couples had been able to work through their issues that way. I barely knew how to say the words no in my life at this time. And anytime we had a conversation, Radius would fight or persuade me until I said yes, so there was no point in me saying no to him. We were not doing very good, so I decided it would be a good idea to try. Plus, he was going to pay for the getaway. We drove to the south side of the island for two nights, and Radius bought a very nice Airbnb. We did think it was going to be a good experience, or at least point us in the right direction, so we were both excited. We had been on this up and down roller coaster in our relationship where it would get really bad, and then we would forgive one another and move past the down until the cycle would repeat. Neither of us wanted to bend for the other any longer, and it caused a drain in our relationships which ate away at our joy. When we got there, we just settled in, watched the sunset, and set intentions with one another. For most of the night, we had the time of our lives. We had crazy conversations that we had never had with one another before, and really got to know each other on a deeper level. Plus, we danced so much, and it just felt like a party and a good time. Radius and I were really good friends outside of our relationship, and in the moments that felt like our friendship was alive, it made it easier to ignore the bad. Moving through the evening, we got to the point where Radius wanted to be sexual. I'd been working through a lot of sexual trauma this summer, so I'd been very shut off sexually, both to him and in general. He had tried several different methods to get me to open up and be sexual with him, and he had also been struggling because he had a sex requirement for our relationship, which stated that he needed it every day, if not at least every other day, and I just wasn't hitting the bar. We moved into the bedroom, and just like always, I went numb. And then somehow I came back to my body and said I couldn't go any longer and just ran to the bath. This had happened several times where after sex, I needed to get in the bath in order to come back to myself. It always happened when I had been numb. Radius joined me and wasn't mad, but I finally told him what I had told Frost earlier in the summer, and he responded as well as he could have. He got in the bath with me and held me while I cried for who knows how long. And the worst part of all the memories where I was this numb is that the order of how these events went down is non-existent in my mind, but the moments themselves that I remember are crystal clear. We eventually went to bed, and the next morning felt very open again. Radius wanted to be sexual again that morning, and we went right back to normal and got in a fight. I gave in, like always, and then right as it started, I realized I really didn't want to and told him no. We proceeded to fight some more into the late morning before trying to move on. Radius had invited Sayer and Layla to join us the second evening. When Sayer and Layla arrived, it was later in the afternoon. I was not okay, and Sayer walked right in the door and looked straight into my soul and read me like an open book. I didn't even have anything to say, he just looked at me for a moment and then asked if I was okay. I couldn't form an answer, so I just nodded no and walked away. I had a really hard time walking away from how I was feeling that night, so I went to bed early. The next day, we all woke up and drove back north to where we lived. I had had high hopes that the ceremony would help Radius and I move forward, but rather it placed me in a position that was even more uncomfortable because I had become more aware of how badly I did not want to be in a sexual relationship at this time in my life. Each day became one more day that I began to question myself and my choices in how I got to where I was. I'd begun to think there was not much more I could lose, which was exactly what direction I needed to go in so that I could come to the moment where I would finally walk away.